Coming up on Theater Talk. The American Theater Wing controls the copyright to the Tony Award. I mean, that, that gives you the, the center well, power. Well, actually, I think, actually, we have a new, uh, you know, bonding, and we both uh, control the copyright. The co-copyright. Uh, it's a co-copyright at the moment. Well, you watch out for those producers, because they, <laughs> they, you know producers they get their I'll hands remember on something, that. sweetheart. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> you Oops, I'll take a note. <laughs> Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. Michael, we have the new president of the American Theater Wing, who happens to be the most fabulous costume designer in the history of the Broadway stage. Oh, whoa. <laughs> well, I was William gonna say, I I was gonna say, Susan, that we've had some pretty <laughs> powerful people on Broadway on this show, but no one radiates the power that this man does. He is the new chairman of the American Theater Wing, which controls the Tony Awards. He is also one of the great, great costume designers, Mr. William Ivy Long, who's designed the costumes for Hairspray, Chicago, Nine, Crazy for You, the producers, five Tony Awards, and now, William, that you are the chairman of the American Theater Wing, can you rig it so that you can win a sixth Tony Award somehow? Absolutely, and I can go back in time and do it retroactively. <laughs> <laughs> you, could win, you could win for the stuff that you didn't win I for. I plan to win for Guys and Dolls, <laughs> and for, let's Let's see. Oh, I have a whole small side list. You should have won for Guys and Dolls because <laughs> that, I think, well, Nine is the uh, uh, show that really established you in this racket as a costume designer. But I remember vividly your costumes for Guys and Dolls. And if I'm not mistaken, even Frank Rich in his review singled out the brilliance of those costumes for that uh, revival. But you with beat Nathan yourself Lane. for Guys and Dolls. That's right. Crazy you, viewers. You won idea. that year. You won. Why is it we remember all of our bad reviews and we don't remember the good reviews? So I, I actually don't remember that. I just remember <laughs> you, your reviews. No, I'm <laughs> Have you ever gotten kidding. a bad review, though, for your costumes ever? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right. Tell you remember one? I'll do the best review. No, I actually have <laughs> remembered the best. In fact, I made it the title of my uh, catalog, my first uh, exhibit of my work. Uh, John Simon. Right. Um, wrote that William Ivy Long's costumes hover between taste and travesty. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it seared itself on my brain, and I thought it was a bad review at first, but of course now I've made it the, the uh, well, title of my well, catalog. And, and I thought, gosh, he gets me. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So I remember that one. So For people who don't know, and I can't imagine there's anyone out there uh, who doesn't know what the American Theater Wing is, can you give us a little sense of it and what you want to do with this venerable organization? Oh, goodness. Well, the American Theater Wing was founded under a different, a previous name uh, in 1917, actually, to support the American troops during World War I. Mm -hmm. And uh, we subsequently have been very uh, sort of armed forces oriented. We right. created the uh, Stage Door Canteen. The famous Stage Door the Canteen. The famous Stage Door during Canteen. During World War II exactly. with the American Theater Wing. If that, that's absolutely creation, and you can imagine uh, Marlena Dietrich uh, ladling soup and, and like that, <laughs> Alfred Drake uh, washing dishes. And yep. So that was uh, in the, back then, mm -hmm. and then after the war, they, uh, with no more bandages to wrap, they thought, well, let's, uh, we're all together, we're organized, we're actually speaking to each other, you know, people in the theater yeah. sometimes do. <laughs> and uh, why, don't we, uh, why don't we put on a show, as it were? Mm -hmm. And they created an award about, uh, named after Antoinette Perry, who had been their chairman and had just died, actually, right. uh, the previous year. And uh, they started uh, awarding... Uh, 1947 was the I think first 47 year. 47 was the first yes, Tony Award. Yes, first yeah. year. Yeah. And then, and now we co we co administer it. We right. co uh, put it on with our friends, uh, the Broadway League. Yeah. And so it's a 50 50 uh, presentation. But the uh, the American Theater Wing controls the copyright to the Tony Award. I mean that that gives you the the center of well, power. Actually, I think actually we have a new uh, you know bonding, and we both uh, control the copyright. The co copyright. Uh, it's a co copyright at the moment. Well, you watch out for those producers because they, <laughs> they, you know producers they get their I'll hands on something, that. sweetheart. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. <laughs> you, you <laughs> Oops, I'll take a note. <laughs> so, uh, but we yes, but we we did we did found it, and it still is ours. Yes. But in addition to the Tony Award, I mean, you are a um, nonprofit, a charitable organization, Correct. and you have a history of doing this great work for the troops. 
And you and I have spoken this, about this before. You're from the South. I am, North and Carolina. And you support the troops in the South, right? We do. We're Is big... there anything that the American Theater Wing could start doing again for uh, uh, the guys who are fighting our wars in Afghanistan, who are coming back from Iraq? Is there another kind of a, a stage door canteen or, or, or something that the American Theater Wing could do for our Well, you've put your finger right on a, a very interesting topic. <laughs> uh, everyone, actually, many people have been uh, asking us this, and there is a stage door campi, uh, canteen a museum down in New Orleans, I think, mm. and um, so we have to sort of share the, the name with them at the moment. But uh, yes, there's a quite a bit of interest uh, in that, and actually we've been talking to several uh, real estate people in the, you know, around the Times Square area to see if we oh, can find read, a place. To, Absolutely, you are life. very timely. That's a wonderful uh, that would, but, but I didn't finish your, uh, answering your question. Uh, we also are support, we have, uh, present other awards, not just the Tony Awards. We present the uh, National Theater Awards. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucy Arnaz is the head of that com committee and that whole um, energy around the country, all around the United States. We are the American the Theater American. Wing. Yeah. And we also do a lot of... Uh, Let's see, podcasts are for the radio. We do television. <laughs> you were referring earlier. The American Theater the American Wing seminars. Theater. That's right. And, and you do a Downs lot. Downstage Center is our newest one. Boom. And um, my favorite one uh, that we just did, I wonder why it's my favorite, uh, Tom Schumacher uh, filmed uh, a quick change backstage because no one really knows what happens backstage. We sometimes don't even. Right. But uh, <laughs> I that do. was a joke. That I, was a joke. I usually do. And then and, I know what's uh, going on. Oh, don't. I, <laughs> you know, this is a minefield right here. But I, <laughs> so far, I'm pretending like no one's Come listening. Come on in, so, But I just think they, the they do that show right here in QD. <coughs> but also, that's correct. But also, a very important thing the wing does is that you, you, uh, get young kids, uh, students around the city excited about the theater. You bring them to shows, you organize events and seminars for them, and you've got uh, uh, another new program or something. Springboard NYC, it's actually in its somethingth year, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really excellent. And uh, I've, I've sat in on several, and then I've actually uh, been an interviewer with, with several actors. On it, and and students come to New York and um, from around they, the, from I'm around the entire country, yeah. and they meet agents. They learn, have classes in auditioning. They have classes in how to find an apartment, how to budget <laughs> your <laughs> meager earnings. You know, in other words, how to begin. Let me ask you. We all want to help everybody. We want to help the next generation, and want to help sometimes this generation if they mm. get off track. And you know, let me help ask everybody. you about your beginnings, though. Um, when did you first come to New York? I mean, where did you live? Did you have any money? What What were you doing here? Did you come here to be a costume designer? Uh, yeah, no, I was. I had gone to the Yale Drama School, right, or the Yale School of Drama, it is formerly formerly called. I was in the Brewstein years, right, Robert Brustein. and Robert Brewstein. So I came to New York, and I thought, okay, where should I go to to where Where is it happening? Because I'm sort of a a quiet, unassuming sort, and I <laughs> wanted to, you know, throw myself right into the deep. So I moved right to the Chelsea Hotel. <laughs> and which is the deep, that is, that, especially it, back then. Circa what, 19? Uh, 1975. Well, that was the 1975 deep, to 1980. Well, it's I amazing there. you are still sitting here. You're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I love that. What was it, the Chelsea Hotel? What was it like a southern boy the, walks into the Chelsea I Hotel in 1975? What was that like? And Stanley Bard met me at the door, and, <laughs> and I just said I'd like to live here because I would like to apprentice myself to Charles James, the great couturier, who lived on the sixth floor. And I wanted to learn, I wanted to continue my training. Mm -hmm. So I had been in college for 10 years, and I wanted to continue. So I said, I w I've come to work with Charles James. Well, Mr. James is a very private person, he said. Well, it took me six months to stalk him. <laughs> and then after I uh, finally got his attention, I worked with him actually for the next four years until he died. Really? And uh, I so learned an awful lot at the Chelsea Hotel, and also how to survive New York, how to what New York was. I mean, I still don't know some of those things. But uh, it was certainly a very good uh, starting point. Yeah. <laughs> so were you thinking of being a, uh, a fashion designer? Yes, that was costume designer? one of my, yes, absolutely. Mm. I was looking you, into that. How did you drift into? Well, my friends who had been dire directors in my class, mm -hmm. this is really how people get started, which yeah. is why we try to have these springboard NYCs and the intern programs at, at the American Theater Wing, is because it's really people knowing you. Yeah. It's sort of unfair of course, but uh, if someone knows you, uh, the best way to get work is in, at the 11th hour, in a pinch. Mm. If someone needs help, yeah. it's not quite done. The paint hasn't arrived. Uh, So-and-so is stuck in traffic. Oh, and we, whenever you get a call like that, that's golden yeah. because you can come in and help somebody. And people call the people they know. Right.
Uh, so actually my friends who had been directors of the Yale Drama School and we worked at the weekend cabaret or the summer cabaret. And nobody has any money. and uh, Right, and come do it for free. It and and yeah. I had a big, I had two rooms at the Chelsea and one you could move all the furniture and I could use as a cutting table. <laughs> and I used to make uh, costumes on the floor. <laughs> and people knew I could do this, you know, and I had a sewing machine. Yeah. So uh, I would get those calls, seriously. Now, you uh, have some other mentors, too, a wonderful costume designer who I adore her, uh, Willa Kim. Oh, Willa Kim, I my think dearest Willa, friend. Willa took you under her wing. Oh, she point. did indeed. She did indeed. She remembers me being very rude to her at the beginning. I was just in shock when she spoke to me. <laughs> she said, and he didn't speak to me. He wouldn't even answer my questions. And I was going, <laughs> this is the great Willa Kim. And I still have that feeling every now and then. I'm going, I can't pinch me, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm... I'm uh, great friends with her now, and we go. We just it's just great going places. For her. She's the best date on the planet to anything theatrical, music, dance, ballet, because everyone knows her. Yeah. So you don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to worry about the evening because you'll be in the the center of it all because of Willa. She's just a great greatest artist working in uh, the theater today. I, I think. I want to get to the subject of costume design because I think if I can get you to. Explain to us how you approach your job. I know you brought some sketches here for Cinderella, which is I about did. to open on Broadway. I did. Do you think of yourself as a, a dramatist in the sense, or a dramaturg when you're reading the play and developing? Did from I tell you that? That's exactly what I. No, think. but I mean, if you look at the characters, yeah. you really study it, and from that comes your ideas. If you can... I do think that. I think we're there as a service industry. Mm -hmm. We provide uh, raiment uh, <laughs> to cover the body and uh, to help people become someone else. That's what I often think. Right. And uh, no, we study the script. I think we have to be dramaturgs, which is why I chose the drama school, mm -hmm. because it has, then as now, has an excellent dramaturgy program and a wonderful playwriting program and directing program. So, and I took as many of those classes as I could audit. Uh, they also took uh, business management. So costume designers would audit business management, managing, and, and that was very important too. Oh, so um, yes, I think reading the script is the most important thing of one could do in one's life, and uh, it always begins with the play right. and the written word, and, and then the director's <laughs> interpretation of it. Right, right. So, but I've been it's not without studio. the director, and and you really immerse yourself, especially if you're doing a period piece. I was there when when you were working on the costumes from Ed, for Edwin Drood, which are terrific, a terrific show too, and you had all the Dickensian prints put up. So you surround yourself in the world that you're going to. I thought it was for. important. So we we uh, because Edwin Drood was unfinished. And it was, uh, you know, a novel. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, let's put all the illustrations of every one of Dickens' novels uh, up on the wall, mm. every one of them. So we did that. We filled, like, I don't know how many boards uh, with, uh, you know, whoever had done the steel engravings. Right. And uh, for the, because I thought that would give us an interpretation, especially when um, it was contemporary. I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was happening right then. Right when he, he wrote it. And, and we now look back at a lot of research and it's long ago and far away and right. oh look at those funny bustles. Right. But it was, a, it was a live story, a recent contemporary story. Right. So I thought the more of those sort of contemporary, um, just what you'd expect people to be wearing in the street, type of illustrations would really help us. And they, they did indeed, they really did indeed. Now for Cinderella, you've brought a few sketches here. Can I did, now that? of course this is the, this is total fantasy world <laughs> and uh, I, I will show you two now. Can I hold these up? Yeah. I can make them dance. So now these are, oh, I love the glitter. Fabulous. Oh, well, I see preliminary that's how you sketches dance. you did, right? These are very preliminary. This is Cinderella. Uh, you notice she's not gray. She's uh, a nice sort of Bruegel-inspired uh, lassie here. <laughs> and then here she is after the fairy godmother has uh, granted one of her wishes. And this is going to the ball. Now these are not working drawings. These are sort of idea drawings. This is an idea drawing as well. All this right. is the same, you see. This one, I don't know whether you can tell which came first. Uh, actually, these are like six months apart. So I did come back to it. Although obviously. she's beginning to get more of a, a, of a face in this later drawing. Yes, yeah, she is, she is. So there, there you have it. And then I also do such things as what is the arc of her character? So Cinderella has all of these dresses in the show. I didn't bring the finished ones, but. Ooh. Oh, that's wonderful. So you see, she starts from here. Everything with glitter oh, this is, is. Bride Cinderella. The bride, yeah. yes, she marries. <laughs> well, oh, spoiler. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I'm, I'm going to have to go home. I'm sorry. You all are ruined. People are going to ask for their money back. <laughs> I don't know about you all. Don't you know about the theater? 
again, oh William, goodness. your process of first sitting down to get to the, to the yes. sketch, what takes you there? I draw, oh, research. Also, okay. uh, when you create, uh, I've only done a very few productions that were in fantasy world. In other words, where are we? Yeah. It's an invented magical land. And uh, Siegfried and Roy at the Mirage actually was the first one I ever worked on <laughs> yes. because they landed in a certain place and <laughs> defeated the forces of evil and brought goodness and kindness to the world. And I bet it really came in handy your dramaturgical training. Oh, my school. dramaturgical Drama training. That one. <laughs> oh my goodness, it certainly did. I went deeply back <laughs> in time. <laughs> and uh, no, but Siegfried, they were, they are great, great people. And, and actually part of the dramaturgy was getting to know Siegfried and Roy yeah. and who they are because they are uh, great humanitarians and great animaltarians and uh, <laughs> earthtarians. And, and so actually part of the dramaturgy seriously about a story about good and evil as told by two of the greatest uh, savers of endangered species. You, you know you've got to love world. somebody who loves cats like that. You have to, and uh, especially when they have this special language with cats yeah. and, uh, and other animals. I mean, they're horses and elephants really? and, and mostly cats. And, did uh, you costume any of the animals for them? No, I, was, I costumed, I, I did some comparisons which is the term for uh, horse blankets and elephant blankets. But I was not allowed to uh, measure them or get near them or fit them. So uh, I had the measurements done for me. You've been dealing with divas and, and I, of all sorts your whole life. Of You're all not lay. afraid to go to exactly. any of these animals. Come oh, on. I'm still afraid. I'm still afraid. There's all right, tell us. Can, can you anyway. tell us any of the great actors or actresses that you've uh, you fitted? Because it's a kind of an easy uh oh. Thing. You're going down this path. No, no, no can, I can't write that book. I know, but we you, take a Hippocratic oath to protect <laughs> the secrets of the fitting can room. Can you tell us anyone that you were intimidated by, though? Was there anybody? Oh, I'm intimidated uh, by. Uh, Many, many people until I really get to know them, and then only a few people after that. <laughs> Can you think of one that you went, oh, you were really I scared, can't and then they I'm turned out to be. I'm this person. Marion Seldes. Oh, Let's start with Mary and our Seldes. favorite. Why? And, what, what about Marion? Oh, why did you go, oh, oh well, that, that was the marvelous. reason. There's the answer. Well, this is Marion Seldes. She who's never missed a performance, Everybody. you know? And, uh, and in no way arrogant. I mean, that's the most wonderful thing about her. Not an she, ounce she, of arrogance. Not, a, not an ounce no. of arrogance. And totally in control. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to be shown up as the fraud that I am. <laughs> you know, she will see through me. You know, that's the sort of yes. intimidation I mean when right. I go and I, I see people like this. And, of course, and you can't tell us the ones that you thought, oh, what a total bleep-up fraud this woman turns out to be. <laughs> <laughs> when you deal with someone like Marion, because just her figure... The body oh my goodness. must be fascinating for we you. We call that a design. coat hanger. I mean, you, anything you put on, it's just, you know, mm. flawless. And, of course, her favorite color, purple. Right. So right. Uh, she, and, and, and talk about her script study. <laughs> I did uh, several, I, I think I, I designed all of Neil Simon's last five world premiere plays. Really? Wow. For some reason, I was the one at the, you know, hey, you, come. come <laughs> in. And, and one of them, I'll never forget doing... Um, it was called uh, 45 Seconds from Broadway. Yes. It all took place in the Empire right. Diner. No, it was the Edison Cafe. The Edison, the Edison, Edison Cafe. Did, the Edison. What did I say? I'll say the Empire Diner. Empire Diner. Oh, Ed Edison, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Edison. Whoops. Where all sorry. Broadway hangs e, out. And that's right. Has much and, uh, correct, correct. And Marion was, uh, was uh, the, the part of a couple who would come in, and uh, she was wearing a very specific fur coat. And uh, I was meeting with the director, Jerry Zachs, and, mm -hmm. and uh, Neil Simon, of course, the great Mr. Simon, and um, I couldn't get it right. I, could, I couldn't, uh, references or this, and, and he says, that's not right. I said, I, I've, I've tried. Would you, would you mind sketching it for me? Neil Simon sketched this fur coat for me, huh. and it, he had described it as having been added onto by the owner you know, with different pieces, making it longer, yeah, but yeah, different. Patched up. You patched up, sort of, and I didn't know because I thought it's not really a joke. It's not Joseph and the Amazing, you know. It's not Grisabella, the glamour cat. No, it's not, and I, I couldn't understand it, and so he drew it for me, and then I took it to the, fit, to the fitting, and Mary and I fit, poured over it and figured it out, and I had all these different pieces of, you know, coats, you know, and we sort of put it together. Oh, as, and you he said, oh, yes, that's it. That's it, when he saw it. He said, yeah, that's it. I thought, oh, gee, thanks, you know, help. You know? But no, he did. He sketched it for me. You look like you're having so much fun with some of your things. For, for example, Hairspray, for which you won the Oh, my goodness, Hairspray. Was that absolutely. as fun for you to do as 
uh, it looks or was it really a trial? Well, I always say fun is once it's open and you're doing the London production. <laughs> that's fun. And that's, the checks are coming in. Yes, that's, that's it. Fun. That's fun. But no, uh, when you've got a delicious, delightful story, which is yeah. about so acceptance and uh, tolerance and pushing the limit on civil rights and, you know, shapes and size issues yeah, and anti-bullying yeah. and, and Baltimore and the 60s and John Waters for heaven's sakes you get to you get to meet John Waters I think your 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 best work though is for Chicago because ah. you, you took something very simple tuxedos the women are in black the men are in black but you individualized each black outfit for the characters and I thought that was a very subtle way of designing well it began back if I'm I thank you for that yes. now in its 17th year yeah. <laughs> uh, what does Barry uh, call us the longest running American musical yes that Barry Weisler has come up with that for you isn't that good that's right <laughs> um, so spoken in English no no that, <laughs> <laughs> no it's great yes it's, it's I mean again yeah. Candor and Ebb. For yeah. But it began as a, as, as a reading, not a reading, but as a no, concert. No, it began, we did the, the well, course, yeah. the year before we did it, they, uh, Walter Bobby and um, and company started the, the Encore series right. at uh, City Center. And he asked me to set it up, set up the costumes. And so it was book in hand, then as now. Okay. And it was to be, we were just trying, and no one was doing them all over the country the way they are now. And it was to rediscover lost gems. And why did we lose them? And if we did, let's sort of fix that so the essence will come through. Right. So um, Chicago wasn't really a lost gem, so it came in the second year. We started with Fiorello, which right. hadn't been revived for which a long Which was terrific, time. I remember. Terrific, that. the first year. Yeah. And then um, Chicago, and we had like two weeks in which to do it. And I had $1,000 and a pair of scissors. Mm. And... <laughs> He said, and, and I had set up for the first Fiorello, I said, the men are in tuxedos, the women are in cocktail or evening gowns, all black, black and white. And uh, to make, so that you would study, it would be focusing on the words and right, the music, right, right. obviously. Right. And the choreography and the, like that. And, uh, but so th we, were, we were in the black and white from that very tight thing. And since I had set it up, I had to stick with it, don't you know? <laughs> and, uh, but it was dance. You see, it was the first all out dance. That's right. You well, see, you can't do your Chicago you, Flossy you know, without and having tuxedos the dance. and you have, and, uh, and you've got Anne Rankin and, and. Exactly, and B.B. Newworth. <laughs> and um, so he said, well, let's move, let's make it sexy. Let's make it refer to the 1929 Flappers, the original, you know, Roxy Hart. And let's also refer to Fosse and let's refer to now. So those are the three periods, doing gangsters, but with bell bottoms, Fosse bell bottoms, and gangster hats, but yet Fosse, you know, energy. Circle and 75, was too. That. Yeah. And then we were doing, yes, no, exactly. And we were doing the, the period in New York at the time, and stretch and, and uh, see-through was all yeah. uh, very in. And so I just got my scissors and my... my uh, sewing machine with my stretch stitch mm -hmm. and cut and paste it and put it on and but this is very important uh, we gotta wrap this up but it's a very important lesson for uh, young people I think going into this business to learn and I know this is important to you because this is what the American Theatre Wing does that <clears throat> there are so many layers to these costumes there are so many yes. things you're talking about and thinking about and it may look like a nice tuxedo to us but underneath that is getting that Fosse getting at the 1920 sensibility exactly yeah, and I always uh, the only tuxedo in it actually is Billy Flynn. I would always have to go and purchase that because I could, but I would buy a size larger so that I could nip the shoulders would be bigger and I would nip it in because those were the gangster years. Oh, that's but contemporary right. clothes were toward they haven't been big forties. So I would always take people and buy a a uh, size too big a tux and just to, to nip it in, just to give that extra mm. feel and double breasted because I love the way a ma it looks when a man puts his hand in his pockets with double breasted. You know, you don't open up a double breasted, you deal with it. And I do redesign uh, variations for different actors and actresses as, uh, but I use the same fabric always. This this well for for Roxy lace. I use the Roxy lace, but I can make it in different ways. Right. Mama Morton fabric is the same stripe fabric, but different interpretations. Mm -hmm. Some uh, Kelly Osborne is a different <laughs> interpretation from um, 
you know, some, shall we just say someone else? <laughs> and uh, so we have a lot of fun with that. And I think I think people love going into Chicago for a few months because oh, they yeah. it's they they get to do different things. If than, I ever get into William Ivy Long show, I want to know: Do I get to keep the costume? Not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I bet a few have made their way out of the, I'm just saying. Out of the backstage of <laughs> somebody's leading show. All right. uh, delightful uh, uh, chat with you. William Ivy Long, uh, one of Broadway's great costume designers, five-time Tony Award winner, and the new chairman of the American Theater Wing. I love the idea for the stage door canteen and doing great. Something, That's for, great. something for our troops. Thanks for plugging it. Absolutely. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Eleanor Naylor Dana Charitable Trust, the Alan S. Gordon Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, Carrie J. Fries, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, and the New York State Council on the Arts, a state agency. We welcome your questions or comments for Theatre Talk. Thank you and good night. <laughs>